Sup y'all, and welcome to Nature and Perspectives, Part 3. Today we're going to look at various types of regions to understand how they are useful for our study of the world around us. So to begin, we first consider our mental map, or the perceptions we carry in our minds of places we have visited or heard of. Areas closest to us in which we have a keen sense of place are best described as our activity space, also known as our action space. Your daily commute from home to school or home to a job and back again would obviously fashion a much more accurate mental map than a place you may have visited only once in your life. Our mental maps can therefore include places we have actually seen and visited, but also terra incognita, which are the unknown lands and places we wouldn't likely have access to. You may pass by homes, businesses, schools, and other private lands, but you have clearly not actually visited all those places. Moving on, and not to belabor the point, but geographers are intensely interested in viewing people, places, and phenomena at different scales. To this end, we consider the term rescale, which can refer to an event or phenomenon that has an impact beyond its local scale. Consider one of the most costly natural disasters in modern history, the 2010 volcanic eruption of, brace yourself, Eya Fiatla Jokic, which is Icelandic for Iceland Mountain Glacier. The eruption began in March and smoldered until May. In that time, the volcano in Iceland disrupted air travel throughout Europe and the Northern Hemisphere. The grounding of thousands of flights at times cost upwards of $200 million a day. Another way of looking at rescaling, or jumping scale, is when people generate support for a cause or position by utilizing other people, or technology such as the internet, at different scales. In 2011, a major nationalist and pro-democratic movement exploded in the Middle East known as the Arab Spring. Now, when people want to start a movement or revolution, they need to spread the word. Since this occurred in the age of mass and social media, the internet proved to be the perfect medium to diffuse their ideas and to gain followers and momentum. Of course, the governments knew this as well, and several Middle Eastern states restricted internet traffic to numerous websites, as you can see which happened quite abruptly in Egypt. The governments in power also imprisoned people they believed to be dangerous to the state. So, in sum, scale is clearly an invaluable tool in the field of... Geography. Uh, yeah! Now we shift our attention to the theme of region, and there are three types of regions we are interested in. The first one being a formal region, also known as a uniform or homogeneous region. Formal regions are based on data, meaning they are predicated on facts, or at least the best information we have. Often, formal regions can be categorized using physical characteristics such as landforms, like the Amazon River Basin, as well as other traits such as climate, vegetation, or other environmental features. Formal regions can also be based on cultural linkages and other human-caused divisions. For instance, this map that highlights where German first speakers are prevalent in Europe. So, formal regions can be divided by means of other human characteristics, such as religion, ethnicity, political boundaries, and so on. Even time zones, for instance, meet the criteria of a formal region. You know when you're in one, you know when you're out of one. A second type of region is functional, or nodal, which is defined by a certain set of activities or interactions within a certain area. The key word to remember with functional region is interaction and the nature of these interactions can be social, political, economic, or caused by some other influence. The reason why they are sometimes called nodal regions is because they are usually organized around a node or core area, connected to other external areas. Now, interaction can often diminish as you move from the core to the outer areas, called the periphery, and this is known as distance decay. Interactions can involve a myriad of activities, for instance, the movement of people commuting to a city center and then back home, which would be their activity or action space, if you remember. In some cases, the region may be no wider than the width of a road. Other interactions could include telephone calls, financial transactions, newspaper circulations, etc., etc. A third type of region is perceptual, meaning it exists in our minds, such as our mental maps, if you remember. 
They are based on accumulated knowledge of places and regions and are not officially delineated or demarcated. They are also referred to as vernacular regions. To speak in the vernacular is to speak using the language and dialect of the people in the local area. So, whereas formal regions have clear structure and boundaries, perceptual regions do not. And, as you can see on this map, it shows the percentages of people who consider different states as belonging to the South, which really is not a definite region at all. South Florida is another great example of this. People living in Miami or Fort Lauderdale would definitely say they were in South Florida, which again is a vernacular term. But ask them where South Florida begins or ends, and you will receive a litany of answers. And just as our perceptions of the world around us change as we age, so do perceptual regions over time. And all regions, for that matter. The University of South Florida is in Tampa, and you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who would consider that part of South Florida today. But when it was founded in 1956, the majority of Floridians lived further north. So, from the perspective of places such as Tallahassee or Jacksonville, Tampa was indeed south of their vantage point. So that concludes our initial study on formal, functional, and perceptual regions. Are you? Ivan the Red. What do you want? Hmm. To fight you. What? Gordon the coward won't accept my challenge. What's that to do with me? If I keep killing ninjas, I'll drown him out. You're mad. Gordon's a great ninja. No! I'll prove I'm the best. Huh?